Hey guys, welcome to the Testing Academy. My name is Pramod, and thanks a lot for this uh, first part of the series where it was very, very amazing response from the manual testing interview question and answer, real time scenario based questions that we have covered in the part one. Guys, this is a part two of the series where we will cover the next set of questions. Right? I hope you are going to like those questions. These are very important. And trust me, whenever interviewer is going to ask this real time or you can say real life scenarios or behavioral or you can say scenario based question related to manual testing. Trust me, you will be able to crack that. Okay, so make sure you watch this video in 1.2x or 1.5x so that you can cover till the end. And if you have any other question that you would like to discuss with me, please comment down below. And if you want the part three in the series where we will cover more set of questions related to manual testing interviews, then let me know in the comments. I will highly recommend. Please go ahead and type part three right now so that we can cover more questions. All right, let's get started and let's discuss about the manual testing interview question and answers, real life scenario, or you can say that scenario based questions all right so let's take this question which is basically what to do when your test environment is not working and current branches are not deployed guys this is really really important what happens is whenever you are going to test something right so your test environment your whatever for example whatever the process qa process that you are following right you have a software testing life cycle we call it stlc right so in that there is a stage we call it test environment setup and that is not ready and your current branches whatever the developer branches that should be there so that you can start your own testing it is not properly deployed so it's a very real time scenario and people generally interviewer ask you okay what will what what are your steps in this case so how you have to reply you have to reply smartly in this case you can tell them that discuss i will discuss about the checklist first of all you have to pull up the checklist that guys the lo is developer has followed these kind of checklists or not you have to tell them that there is a entry criteria basically there is a entry criteria so if this is a stage if we were it test environment setup stage in the stlc there is a entry criteria the entry criteria was the checklist should be done and correct branches should be deployed this was failing so you have to escalate to the correct developer okay that's why i told you right you have to escalate this is what exactly they want to know the entry criteria here is failing right because their current branches are not deployed and your test environment is not working so you will be not be able to properly test make sense that's why and you can post them into a group for example slack you can on you can post them you can use a communication of email to let your stakeholders know that yes this and highlight the issue if possible that correct branches are not deployed please uh, sort it out because this is going to be a problem for us to release the product okay let's move on to the next important question documentation versus work this is very very important many times in your startup right people will basically say you or uh, uh, promote let's not create a test plan document let's not create a test cases document let's not create a bug report document directly add bugs to the jira and that's it and it will accelerate our process guys this is this is not true I even I have worked on the startup for almost three years. I have worked on the bigger companies uh, almost like four five years, and I have worked on bigger product based companies right now also. Trust me, documentation is the king. Whenever th there are people who will say that uh, it will slow down your process of QA, but trust me, documentation will help you whenever there is a production bug. Whenever they want to know about your visibility of your bug, right? Visibility is only can be a can be improved by only the documentation so as per agile if you say work is greater than the documentation but hot fixes don't require documentation that is fine whenever you're releasing the hot fixes you don't have to document but apart from this i would suggest you that take some take out some buffer time and add your documentation create your test plan create your test cases bug reports test execution reports these are important and this will make you a great manual tester also Okay, sometimes I have shown documentation basically save you from the production bugs because uh, whatever the test cases that you have created, you have basically reviewed them with the developers and they they cannot pinpoint you directly on this case. So make sure you do that. And proper bug reporting is important uh, where it's a part of documentation only. That's why. Okay. Next question. Let's move on to next question, which is Dev doesn't uh, respect the QA. This is very important topic. Where I have what I have seen is. Any developer, right? They don't respect your uh, whatever the bugs that you are raising or anything related to it, right? So what you have to do? I would suggest you that only add bugs when you are hundred percent confident and backed by the video and screenshot and proof. Guys, this is really really important, which I have seen especially that uh, people as a QA, right? Even if you are a manual tester, you are raising bug, but you are under confident and you don't have any logs or anything. You just add one liner and that's it. Don't do that. This is not a way. 
right make sure you are 100% confident that this bug exists you know how to basically reproduce this bug you have correct step to reproduce uh, steps you have a video you have a screenshot available okay screenshot basically uh, as a proof which is available okay then only please add the bug don't do the verbal communication of a bug this is not important uh, you have to own the quality if you want to own the quality make sure you are adding a bug with where you are 100% sure okay and ask more doubt like a customer so make sure you are asking any kind of a doubt as a customer show them that there is an impact of a bug basically a revenue loss will be there if this bug get leaked proper documentation and it will increase your visibility also so please make sure that if developer is not respecting you because you are adding a bad quality of a bug right remove that you have what you have to do is you have to give them you basically own the quality you don't do any verbal thing right you have a proper documentation then only developers will also respect you and add proper bugs which are highly highly impactful think like a customer that's the whole summary of this okay whenever you are thinking like a customer you will find a important box and developer will respect you that's it okay let's do the another important question which is smoke test versus the sanity uh, sanity test i think this is really important and many times i have seen this is very common question people generally ask you uh, in the interview also if you see smoke test right it is basically performed a certain time and it's basically important for a critical functionality of a program so whenever you are doing a smoke test smoke test right it's basically to check the critical functionality and whenever you are doing a sanity test right it's basically used to check for a new feature or bugs that has been fixed so that's why it is really important i think the important diagram here which is very very, very helpful whenever you have an initial build right so there is an initial build which is given so right now suppose they have made a login page scenario they have created just now and they want you to test it right so we have a build one build two build three right so whenever you verify the critical functionality that application starts successfully or login is working fine then it is called as smoke testing okay so whenever you are thinking that okay uh, developer has given me this application where we have this uh, login scenario or suppose this is a web application i am able to load it is called as smoke test right initial whenever you are verifying the critical functionality of app we call it smoke testing but whenever there is a stable builds and there are some bugs which are basically fixed and they want to you to test it out it's a sanity where you will verify the new functionality or anything that is added to the build for example they have added another sign up or remember me flow then it's a basically sanity they want to check it out they want to check if the build is working fine or not right i hope this is this makes sense i have created a separate video around this I, i'm going to put the link in the description also okay let's move on to the next question all right which is basically tell me about your daily activities tell me about your daily activity as a manual tester very very important question guys very very important question trust me people generally give this answer in a very wrong, wrong way let me give you answer in a very effective way. what you will say generally i do test execution of a remaining test cases so right now if i'm in a middle for example right now it's tuesday right so whatever the remaining test cases that i have written i will do the execution right so i will do the test execution i will run the smoke test i told you right if there is a build which is i want to test it out initially right i will take as a smoke test i will retest the existing bugs or do the verification it is required you can uh, whatever the bugs that i am encountering right now i will raise that whatever the reports i want to send to the stakeholders about the today's qa process i will do that today whatever the task assigned to me i have to work on it right so task can be in your automation it can be creating some test cases right in in a manual testing world it will be sending out the report right raising bugs re remaining test cases execution and writing new test cases if it is required so those thing you can say that in a very pro very simple manner okay i think this will help you a lot let's move on to the next question which, which is basically how will you debug or error in login page so very interesting question many times people will ask you this question where they where they will give you a simple login page so this is a very simple login page they have an email address they have a password they have a sign up how will you test this and how will you basically check for the errors they want to know the out of box scenarios to be honest okay what you need to check is basically console error just check that if whenever i am submitting any kind of a username here and password here right after clicking the sign up button if i am not getting any console error console errors are javascript errors they you that you can see on the chrome dev tools 
so press f12 if you are on windows and in uh, linux i think there's a shortcut right click inspect element go to console you will see console errors those you need to check okay and uh, here you can basically open the chrome dev tools and verify the api is giving you 100 after successful login that you can basically verify you can verify the response of an api you can verify you can check if the logs in sanitary js this is like a, a sanitary js is basically uh, a logging mechanism where it whenever there is a javascript error they will log somewhere right that you can basically check uh, check in the gray log or kibana or extra sometimes people have a backend error mechanism also where they have they are logging everything and basically showing you in the gray log gray log is nothing but a logging server in a backend that will give you the logs of everything that you are doing every event that your application is doing any user is doing right everything that's where you will see all the things so you can debug this issue okay and you can do cross browser testing you can just check for the cross browser different browser you can check on internet you can do a browser issues other things that you can check it out so here they want to know about the out of box scenarios as well as how will you debug this okay i hope this is next nice. i hope you have learned something here in this guys uh, let me move back here right this was the part two guys if you want me to create a part three please comment down the part three like and subscribe for these kind of videos i hope you have learned something new and thanks a lot for supporting this channel i'll see you in the next video bye